Well, hello there and welcome to this video tutorial where we're going to learn more about FileMaker Pro. My name is Matt Petrowski, bringing you these tutorial videos from my website, FileMakerMagazine.com. In this quick little beginner's tip tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at primary keys. Now, if you've worked with FileMaker at all, you know that you have to have a key value, but which one do you use? Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. All right, so the first thing I'd like to point out is there are three different key types in this particular file. You can create this file yourself. In fact, I suggest that you do. If you're a beginner and you're on the path of becoming an intermediate, a more proficient, or even an advanced developer, then knowing what I'm going to tell you in this video is very important, and I'll tell you why. In many of the videos that you will see online, you will see suggestions to use what's known as a serial number value as your primary key. Right off the bat, no qualms about it, I am going to tell you, don't do that. We live in a development world where that is a development technique that is very old and should not be used in a modern database. Why? Well, we're going to get to that in just a little bit. So let's take a look at these three keys. Here in my file, I'm going to go into the Manage or the Define database, and we will take a look at the three of them, one of which you're probably already familiar with. My default database, or the default fields that are created when a new table is created, are these fields right here. Now, these fields we can pretty much ignore, the creation and the modification. That really has nothing to do with what we're talking about. In fact, I'm going to get rid of them so that we're not confused. The ID field is an auto-created field in my FileMaker database. In fact, it's probably created in the default database that you are creating as well. It may, however, I have mine custom modified so that it always uses UUID. It may be using this right here, this particular setting of a serial number. Well, how did I get to that? Well, we take a look at this, this field called serial. When I double clicked this, the serial number option was selected. We have the generate on creation or on commit. On commit, we don't really need to worry about. By default, FileMaker does not have what are known as transactions turned on. And we'll leave that for another time. You can search for that keyword over on FileMakers forums or other forums if you're interested in what transactions actually are. But that's what the on commit means in terms of this serial number. For the most part, on creation is used. Now, on many other view, uh, videos on YouTube, even other standard training, Developers will show you to use this method for your primary key, and I'm begging you that you don't. In fact, you will see them do things like P003. You can use this technique where, say, for example, you want this to be invoice 0001, where we have the capability to have up to 999 values right there. If I needed to go out one more, I would just go out another digit, and I would start this with four digits of zeros and then a one. You can certainly still use this method in order to track your invoices, your products, whatever it is that you want to have some type of prefix with a sequential value because it's very easy for us as humans to remember a simple number, 23, 444, it's invoice 769, bring that one up. Very useful for searching, but not a good idea for structuring your database and we'll tell you why it's coming up. So the serial number that you're learning on these other YouTube videos or from other instructors, the reason that it's not good is because it doesn't fit in our modern world and we will see why. Does it work? Certainly it works. It is a unique value that identifies a given record absolute and uniquely. Let's take a look at that. As I zoom out here, I have two records in this database. There they are right there, one and two. As I flip between them, we can see that Matt is number one and Mary is number two. Now for the life of the database, unless a user had access to this particular value, then Matt would always be number one and Mary would always be number two. And all related records connected to Matt, that's invoices, uh, 
products, students, well, not products, but anything that's connected, my details, my phone numbers, if I'm keep keeping that in another table, it would always be associated to number two. But here's the big problem when we use serial numbers. The instant that the question comes up, hey, can I actually take this on a mobile device, take a copy of the database, go capture data, and then bring it back to you? The very second that you run another copy of this database, whether you run it on two copies of FileMaker Server, not suggested by the way, or if somebody takes it onto a mobile device, you will have a big, big problem. And that problem is you will have the same numbers generated in two different places. Now, if you know for absolute 100% certainty that nobody will ever ask the question, hey, can I take this database offline or can we host a copy of this on another FileMaker server? Then maybe you're okay with still using serial values, but I'm going to tell you this, it's still not as good as using a UUID. Now on screen, we have two different UUIDs. We have the first one that started earlier in uh, versions of FileMaker prior to, I believe, FileMaker 17. And then we have this version right here. Now you can see right here, when I click into the field, this is saying 2.69 uh, to the 56 digits. It's actually a UUID number key. Now, what is the difference between these? Well, it turns out in most FileMaker systems, there's not that big of a difference. But when you get to a database that's going to be handling hundreds of thousands, half a million, three quarters of a million, a million records, or even more, where you have tables with multi-million record rows, it turns out that even though this is a longer value, that is 100% unique, just as unique as this value of two is to Mary, this value that is unique is going to be non-duplicable. -duplic you cannot duplicate this number, even if you took this database and put it onto an iPhone, or iPad, or ran another copy on another server. A completely unique number would be generated in two different locations, making synchronization a possibility. So the question boils down to, why would I want to do this when I want to have this say invoice 0002 or INV or product or whatever it is? You can do both of them. In fact, I suggest that you do. Use the serial number for the purpose of searching. You can certainly put the serial number in and it can say invoice 002 and a user can come in and just search for invoice number two or 223. But behind the scenes in a professional FileMaker database, you will never reveal your primary key. Your primary key is for you as the developer in order to know behind the scenes what connects to what. And you don't expose this value. Now this first one right up here is just a standard FileMaker UUID. So what do these look like in the actual database? Let's open up the Manage Database and let's take a look at my ID field. Here are the settings right here. They are a calculated value. When we specify this, we can see that it is FileMaker's function get UUID. That's going to create a unique number. And even if there are two copies of the same database and they both create a record at the same time, those values will be different in both different locations. Not the case with a serial number. You can also see that down here at the bottom, I have prohibit modification of value during data entry. This particular checkbox applies only when the field is on the layout and accessible. What are we going to do in most all situations? Very, very rarely are we ever going to expose our primary key. This field will not, be, not even be on the layout. It would be completely gone. So as I undo that, and we show this just for the purpose of showing this, the easy way of referencing a UUID value is simply by just looking at either the first four digits or looking at the last three digits. Usually that's enough of a difference between values that make them extremely unique. And the same would apply for this. You'd just probably look at the first numbers. It's 26961 is this particular record. Not having to know all of the rest of the values in order to know what's connected to what. So why have you been taught how to use the serial number? Well, as we go up here and let's take a look at a, we'll create a new window. 
and we will switch to the related tables and we'll look at our serial values and we will add a portal and create some data. So over here for Matt, I have two different structures in this particular setup. We're going to go to the relationship graph and we can see we have a structure where we've got our serial value connected to our foreign key and then we have our ID, which is a UUID. In this case, it's the one that uses uh, alpha characters as well to our ID primary keys. Now a little side trip right here. I love the fact that this ID tells me that this is the primary key of this table primary keys. And when I name the foreign key, I simply name the foreign key the same name, ID, with an underscore, and then the table that that is going to connect to. So in the related table, I can see that this particular field value is the foreign key connecting to the primary keys table, because it says it. That's the name of the field. It's the foreign key ID connecting to primary keys. Otherwise, if it was named ID, it's the primary key for that table. Hopefully that makes sense. Over here, we've got a situation where I've got my serial number, and then I've got foreign key. But I have no clue what this foreign key, once I look at just this table, is connecting to. There's nothing in the name of the field that tells me what it's a foreign key in terms of the table that it connects to. So that's just a thing that I like to do in terms of making things super clear in terms of what connects to what. But when we look at these by opening these tables and we look at our relationship, which over here I'm going to go into uh, layout mode, I'm going to create a table or a portal, excuse me, I'm going to connect to my serial number right here, and I'm going to allow the creation of records. Actually, I need to turn that on. I don't have that turned on right here. Uh, in the related table, I'm going to put the amount field right here. And then I'm going to put a second copy of this portal. I'm just drag copying this, and this one I'm going to say is the UUID. And we're going to look at why you're being shown to use the serial number. I need to change the field here as well. Based on the relationship, I need to change it to the UUID because that matches the UUID right here. It's the table where the data is coming from. And we'll say the amount right there. Uh, we will go into browse mode here really quickly, zoom out, and I do need to turn on the relationships for the ability to create records. So that's turned on right there. And then we go right here and I turn it on for right here. So now I am ba basically able to create relationships or create new related records, both using the serial key and the UUID key. So why are we being taught by other developers to use these serial numbers? Basically because it's simple. So for the record of Matt, and I forget which one is here, I'm going to quickly go, that's serial number right there. So let's throw in some amounts. So I've got, let's say, $40, and then I've got $50, and then a $2.35 thing. And we'll drag our keys right here, and that's our primary keys. Don't know why that showed up over there on the 235. Very interesting. I might have tabbed. So we will add our field right here that I'm interested in looking at, which is the amount right there. And there we go. That is basically why we are doing things. It's super easy to understand. I can look over here. Let's get these in line with each other so that we can see when I zoom in. I can so easily look at this and say, oh, Matt is record number one, and he has two amounts. He has $40 and $50. But what's more difficult is I've got this long number. Am I supposed to decipher that? Like I said, it's really easy. You're just going to say 6EA3, 6EA3. That's how I know the connection is that this is $2.35 belonging to Matt. So that is the distinction right there with regards to primary keys. Why I suggest that you do not use serial numbers, it's because they are too easy to be duplicated when a database needs to be taken offline or whatever reason, and you always get uniqueness across the board with UUIDs. If you're going to build a super complex database that you know is going to grow super large, don't be afraid of this super large number. Also, the last tip that I'm going to lead you, leave you with, the formatting by default on a FileMaker field when it is not able to show all of the different digits is to actually format this into a human readable format. If you want to turn that off, go into layout mode, select the field, 
go over to the fourth tab, the data tab, scroll down to the bottom of that, and you're going to find this area of data formatting. Rather than general, which is where FileMaker is going to apply its own formatting, putting that into the shorter version, we can switch this to as entered. And as soon as we do that and go into browse mode, we will see the full value in that field, no matter what record we go to. So this has been a FileMaker quick tip. Again, use those UUIDs. Please do not use serial numbers. If you have used serial numbers and you're now asking yourself, great, is this something I need to move through? Well, don't be concerned. You can make the switch. That's another video for another time with a much wider scope in terms of talking about it. It is definitely possible. But if you're starting out new, start with those UUIDs. And if you're going really big with FileMaker, use the UUID number function for that. I hope this has helped you out. This has been, again, been a beginner's quick tip from FileMaker Magazine. My name is Matt Petrowski, wishing you much luck with your FileMaker database. And until next time, happy file making and much luck.